Hello again, everybody, and welcome to another exciting Daily December. This is Daily December 2015, Day 8. Um, so, uh, just finished watching The Wiz live. Um, I, uh, first time I went to college, I majored in theater, uh, with a minor in music because they didn't actually have a degree in, uh, uh, musical theater at the college that I went to. So I basically made my own. It was, again, majored in theater, uh, minored in music, and my instrument of choice was vocal performance. So, yeah, I, uh, I'm just gonna read this. I, uh, <clears throat> did that because musicals, uh, my first acting experience was in a musical. Uh, I got cast as only in South Pacific. Uh, if the, uh, those of you that are familiar with South Pacific and have no idea who Henri is, he's the dude that comes on twice during the show to get the kids off stage. That's his entire purpose. I spoke French. I think one of my biggest lines was Venez petit, which means come children. That was it, or technically come little. Um, but so yeah. Um, the spring after that I got cast as the romantic lead in the fall play or the spring play, I mean, and uh, from that point on, I was hooked. Uh, I've done oh, close to two dozen shows, uh, everything from musicals. I technically did an opera once, uh, because for those of you that don't know, uh, Les Mis is actually uh, an opera, because there's no actual spoken dialogue. The entire um, show is sung from beginning to end, so technically, it is an opera. Um, so... Um, uh, I was Javert and Les Mis. Uh, I've been in a lot of different musicals. I was in The Music Man. Uh, I was in, uh, oh, what's it called? Guys and Dolls. Uh, I, I love musicals. I always have. Um, this new resurgence of musicals in uh, Hollywood and everything has really been exciting to me. Um, <clears throat> I, uh, I liked the movie Rent. Uh, I wasn't completely blown away uh, with it, but it was very, very well done, uh, especially since I got most of the Broadway cast to do it, and Rent is a phenomenal show. Um, I didn't get a chance to see Into the Woods, but I love the show itself. It's a beautiful, amazing show. Um, a lot of uh, the more current, uh, uh, more recent musicals that uh, they've been making, I've, I've really, really enjoyed, and uh, I really want to support them making more musicals. When I first heard that they were doing Sound of Music live, I was really, really thrilled about it. Um, I didn't get a chance to watch it, uh, but the pieces I saw were not bad. Um, they just weren't all that amazing. Uh, the same rang true for uh, Peter Pan live. Another one that I'm like, I love, I love Peter Pan. I was in Peter Pan when I was younger. Um, I played the crocodile. Uh, it's, it's a, it's a great show. Uh, one of the uh, movies that defined my childhood was Hook. Um, and, uh, I've always been a big fan of J.M. Barry and the Peter Pan mythos. I just, I've, my entire life I've wanted to go to Neverland. So, uh, and again, the same thing happened. Uh, I didn't get a chance to watch the whole thing. Uh, the clips I saw, again, were not bad by any stretch of the imagination, but they weren't amazing. Um, and that's one of the things that a lot of people don't realize about musical theater is when you get into a theater and you see a show, there's an amazing aspect to it every single time. Everything from, you know, your high school play all the way up to Broadway. When you get in there, there's just something, that's my phone, um, there's just something about it that seems amazing and fantastical and it just... It's an experience. Watching theater is an amazing experience. I was lucky enough to be able to see, I think it was three shows uh, on Broadway, uh, which were phenomenal. We saw Fun of the Opera, which I was a little bit upset about just because the uh, uh, the girl that played um, Christine was just not good. Not good at all. Uh, the rest of it was pretty decent, though. Um, I got to see Spamalot, which was phenomenal. Spamalot is so, so good. And then uh, I got to see Wicked, uh, which was still an amazing, lovely show. I got to see the original Broadway cast in Chicago, and nothing ever will top that experience. Uh, so overall, it was a really great experience. And every time I've gone to see a show live, there's just something 
amazing about it. You you get to suspend your disbelief and you get to see all these uh, incredible things and you literally are surrounded by this. You get transported into another world in a way that a, a theater can't do, uh, like a movie theater can't do. Um, a lot of the uh, uh, more modern shows now are starting to use the audience a lot more. Um, you get to see, like you can smell uh, the things that are going on, like the pyrotechnics and stuff like that. You can smell them burning and, and you can hear uh, uh, and, and, and you can hear the actresses and the actors' voices actually doing things. And you've got the pit right in front of you. Sometimes you can even see the pit while it's going on. Like, it's, it's this amazing experience. And thus far, the live shows have not been there. It's, they're not bad by any stretch of the imagination. They're just not... They don't capture live theater. Um... The Wiz, uh, I am familiar with the movie, not the actual Broadway show. The Broadway show that came out in 1974 uh, was very well received. Um, it gets revivals on a regular basis, uh, and uh, it was a very, very well done show. Uh, the movie version of it got panned by critics. It was a box office flop. I loved it. I really did. Um, one of the things that everybody could agree on, Michael Jackson played the Scarecrow, and he was just phenomenal. He was a really, really brilliant um, Scarecrow. Uh, and this was, uh, a lot of people, this was their first introduction to Michael Jackson as an actor. Um, and uh, a lot of people were like, wow, he's, he's got some chops. He could really do some cool stuff. Um, so I liked that. I liked, uh, I liked the other characters. I liked the guy, um, uh, who is it? I can't even remember his name. The guy that played the Tin Man was really, really good. Um, I thought the whole experience of it was very cool. Um, the sets, like everyone uh, talked about how the sets were amazing, uh, and they really, really were. So when I came into this, that was kind of what I was expecting. Um, overall, it was okay. Um, the girl that played uh, Dorothy was okay. Uh, she looked a little bit closer to a 16-year-old girl than... Um, Oh, I can't even remember. Give me a second. I'm actually going to look up. Uh, yeah, there we go. It's Diana Ross. Um, uh, it was uh, Diana Ross in uh, the actual uh, film. And uh, she was, was much older than 16 at this point. Uh, and she did not look 16. And, uh, and that created this kind of weird kind of dichotomy. Because the entire idea behind Dorothy... Uh, is she's a young girl that sees herself as much older than she actually is. Uh, and throughout uh, the whole journey that she goes to, she she learns who she really is, and she learns where she really belongs and gets an appreciation for her family and all the work that they do. And she kind of realizes through that thing that she's not quite as old as she thinks she is. Um, and she's perfectly happy going back and living with her family and kind of growing up naturally. Um, and that's that's a really cool aspect of it. And so a lot of people didn't like that Diana Ross looked enough, like she was not 16. Um, this girl, uh, I, I believe she was like 19, so she's only about three years older, and a lot of actresses play younger or older than they actually are. Uh, a lot of people actually won't reveal their age. They will tell you the age range they can play in Hollywood because once somebody figures out your age, you can be pigeonholed every so often. Um, so that's very, very common. However, uh, she didn't really look 16. She had a decent voice. Um, however, it was marred by probably my biggest complaint about an overall decent show. Um, their sound mixing was off a lot. Um, the audio itself uh, overpowered the actors on a regular basis to the point where you had to strain to hear a lot of them. And a lot of uh, the cast had very, very good voices. The pipes on uh, uh, the girl playing Dorothy were, were phenomenal, and she had a very, very good voice. Um, and um, I really liked... Uh, uh, I don't even remember who it was that was playing the, uh, uh, give me this, um, da, 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 da. Elijah Kelly, uh, played the Scarecrow. I thought he was really, really good. I liked, I actually, I enjoy the song, um, uh, that the Scarecrow sings his first, uh, solo. I think it's, I think it's a really, really cool song. Um, and, uh, I thought he sang that really, really well. Uh, but again, you have this issue where, uh, the vocals will get, covered by the music itself, uh, which in live theater 
uh, is something that you have to worry about, which is why you mic the actors and you don't generally mic the pit. Uh, or if you do, you make sure you mic them separately so you can tone down the pit. Um, pit orchestra and, and uh, instruments in general are always going to be, over, uh, be able to overpower voices. They make more noise. That's how it works. And in this, they didn't have a pit orchestra on stage. So it lies solely on the person who is mixing the sound live, which is a difficult job. It's something that I've been trained to do and I have done uh, on a number of occasions. Uh, and, uh, yeah, that's why you do sound checks and things like that to make sure the mix is correct. And the mix simply wasn't for most of the show. I could completely understand if it was once or twice that it happened, but for most of the show, the music overpowered the actors. Uh, and that's an issue because you don't come to the show to hear the pre-recorded music. You come to the show to see the whole ensemble and the actors are the ones that are telling the story. Uh, the lyrics and everything are telling you what's going on and they're moving you from point to point and they're very, very important. So that was kind of my first gripe with it. Um, the, uh, uh, like I said, the rest of the cast was, was okay. Um, like I said, the ones that I, I thought kind of stood out uh, as, you know, the really, really exceptional ones, I really liked Elijah Kelly. I thought he was very, very good as the Scarecrow. Uh, David Allen Greer was awesome. He played the Cowardly Lion and he was really, really fun to watch. Um, he didn't quite have the stage presence uh, uh, from uh, a movement standpoint. Like he looked a little bit awkward up there every so often. Um, but when he got his chance to shine, he shone so, so well. Uh, and then uh, Neo, who played the Tin Woodman, um, I was not impressed with his vocals. But his movement ability and his dance ability was really, really good. I thought he played uh, the Tin uh, Woodman very, very well. Um, so, yeah, I mean, uh, overall, like I said, the cast wasn't bad. There were some definite uh, standouts. Uh, Uzo Aduba uh, was brilliant as Glinda. I wish there had been more of Uzo in this because she is one of my favorite actresses on television right now. Um, but she did very, very well uh, as Glinda. I didn't know she could sing. Um, and uh, towards the end of her song, you could tell that she was reaching a little bit. She was getting a little bit strained, but she was singing a belting song. For those of you that don't have never done musical theater, especially women, because belting song it's it's a it's a female thing, uh, and uh, it involves not using your falsetto, which is uh, <laughs> again what uh, you generally tend to hear. Uh, you know, uh, Glinda in Wicked is very much a falsetto singer. Uh, Alphaba is a belter uh, from Wicked. Um, and that's what Uzo uh, was doing, was she was doing this amazing belting song. And um, doing that is very, very hard on your uh, vocal cords. Uh, it takes a long time to learn how to do it healthy. Uh, and it's very straining, especially if you're belting just it doesn't have to go very far outside of your range for it to start hurting really, really bad. So I think that particular song uh, pushed Uzo to her limits a little bit because you could see her straining a little at the end. It still sounded amazing. So, yeah. Um, the other thing I think the performance was marred by, and this is true about every other live thing that they've done, is there is no audience. Anyone who has done live theater or performed for an audience before knows it changes your performance significantly. You feed off the energy that the audience gives you and your performance becomes that much more amazing. Um, if you're just performing for cameras and things like that, it's not the same. Uh, I'm not saying it can't be, you know, uh, performances for a camera can't be good. Look at Les Mis. Uh, they got some brilliant, amazing performances from Les Mis. Um, however, uh, it's just, it's not the same. And if they're going to do more of these live things, I really wish they would add an audience because like I said, the audience changes so much. Now that would massively change how they have to shoot it. Uh, and that would add a lot more steps, uh, to what they do. So, uh, again, I can understand why they don't do it. I think it would improve the performance more than it would hinder it by adding more mechanics they would have to worry about. So that was kind of my feeling uh, on The Wiz Live. Uh, like I said, uh, anytime one of these things comes out, I'm going to do my best to watch it uh, or at least watch clips and things like that so that the views come in so that they know people are excited about this because theater, 
in uh, the 90s and uh, uh, early 2000s, theater uh, had been on its way out. It was a dying art form. Uh, and it shouldn't be. Theater is uh, amazing and it teaches you so many wonderful things and it can take you out of your own self and let you do these amazing, wonderful things and experience things that you can't experience in any other artistic medium. Um, and so I want Hollywood to get the idea that theater and live theater is still very much valid, still very much important, even when you can't go to an actual theater. Um, and these live shows, I think, are wonderful uh, chances for people that, uh, first of all, for actors and actresses who don't get the chance to do actual live theater, um, because working in Hollywood is very time consuming. It's very, very uh, difficult and it doesn't really give you a whole lot of time to do um, side projects until you get very, very, uh, uh, until you get pretty far along in your career where you can take enough time off. Um, to do a Broadway show, you're talking about a good six to nine months of your life that you kind of sign away for a limited run. Um, when you look at uh, an actual shooting schedule for a movie, you're talking about anywhere from 60 to 90 days. Um, when you talk about shooting schedule for a television show, um, I believe that only goes into maybe four or five months tops. Um, shooting schedules are remarkably quick. Now, they have other things that they do before that. They have rehearsals and things like that. And so pre-production does take a little bit longer. But a stage show takes so much more time. Uh, and it's, it's such a big commitment. And it's so different from film. Uh, acting and everything. It's just, it's such a different experience. I think these live shows are perfect uh, opportunities for people like Queen Latifah made a really great Oz. Um, she probably would not have had the chance to play that role had she waited for uh, Broadway or an off-Broadway or a tour production to open up a spot for her because it just simply doesn't work that way. Uh, a lot of people uh, that work in theater, uh, you, you work for, you know, the entire run of the show and, uh, you know, you're doing eight shows a week. Uh, it's incredibly intense and it's, and it's very, very difficult. Uh, and, uh, but it's, it's amazing and it's wonderful and, and people love doing it. And it's something that I, I would love to do someday. Uh, but I don't think I have the ability to now. So anyway, that was my opinion on The Wiz. Uh, if you guys haven't seen it, please just go out and watch it. It's on Hulu. Uh, if for no other reason than to support live theater. We really need this to be a thing. We need the entire world to be able to see that live theater is still as alive and amazing as it has always been. Uh, and I, I don't want to see more stuff like this. I would like one day, when I'm big, rich, and famous, to be able to do something like this. Uh, my dream has always been to be able to be Jack Kelly in Newsies uh, or to be able to reprise Javert uh, on stage again because that was an amazing experience. I'd love to be Tony in West Side Story because that's a phenomenal musical. I have a list of roles that I want to play. Um, Colin, mm, is that it? Yeah, I think Collins uh, or Roger uh, from Rent would be amazing roles uh, uh, to play. Um I uh, just oh, I've got I've got so many roles and you know stuff like this uh, gives more people the opportunity to play these roles and that's important and it evolves the character and it evolves the art form itself and you learn so much from doing live shows that you can't learn in any other medium so anyway that's all for me today uh, I'm gonna bring this back up so I can actually see how long I made this another really long one so sue me uh, again. That's all for me today. Again, please go uh, check out The Wiz live. Uh, it's on Hulu. Watch it. Watch all the ads for it. Let them make a bunch of money so they can keep making shows like this, even if it's not your cup of tea. All right? Uh, so, again, it's all for me today. I'll see you guys tomorrow for another daily vlog, uh, daily December. All right? Bye-bye.